the Jaguars voluntarily make decisions that thin out the defensive line a week before the start of the season. We'll talk about that and more here on Locked on Jaguars. You are Locked on Jags, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is happening, good people? Welcome to another edition of Locked On Jaguars. I am Tony Wiggins, your host of the daily Locked On Jaguars podcast. We're at your team every day, and we thank you for making us your first listen. We're free on all platforms, wherever you get your podcasts, so make sure you like and subscribe. I'm going to tell you today's show is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered for this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before because Bet Online is where the game starts. Thank you for starting here with me. We're going to talk this defensive line, man. I'm getting a little scared, just a little bit. And I'm checking it as we speak going um, through this roster and through emails, making sure that the Jaguars do not or have not added another defensive lineman while I start this show, because that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the fact that the configuration of the 53 man roster, particularly at the defensive line position on the interior is a little bit alarming. And it's for a number of reasons, and we'll get into it. Segment two, we'll talk about the prospects. Uh, what could it mean in terms of is there a veteran on the horizon? We'll bring that up and mention in Damakong Su. And in segment three, finally, what we're going to do is kind of tie everything all together and, and show you why the, the pros and the cons of why uh, it is uh, paramount that the Jaguars stay healthy especially at that position. But first and foremost, let's just sort of go through an outline here and map it all together. All summer, the Jaguars were running what you would call in practice your standard 3-4 defense, and then in nickel situations, they would go to a four-man front where they would have, um, just to give you an idea, a uh, traditional nose tackle was Devon Hamilton a guy who could play nose or two gap playing defensive end in Foy Oluwakan, not Foy Oluwakan, I'm sorry, Foley Farukazi, the free agent signing from the Jets, who's also a 320 pounder. And then at the other spot, they listed at defensive end. It's almost like a, some people run a three, four, they still call it a three technique. They do that. I know uh, for years, the Titans did that with Jarrell Casey, uh, the Rams with, um, Aaron Donald. This is with Roy Robinson Harris, RRH. And he's like 6'6, 290. So he, those are the three down linemen. And of course, you had Allen and Walker on the edge with the two linebackers. And then they had depth that reflected that guys that were in camp uh, Jeremiah Ledbetter, uh, Alec, uh, Adam Gostas, and uh, Israel Antoine and Raquel Ray Williams. They had a bunch of big people, a bunch of them. And we even talked about how their size up front was something that was a plus for the team. Well, as it turns out, the Jaguars made a bunch of cuts. They also had Malcolm Brown. That was the first one they made. And then all the young guys, whether it be Antoine, Raycon Williams, I think Raycon Williams is on, on IR. But Jeremiah Lebet, all of those, all of those guys were let go. And then it's like, okay, well, maybe they're gonna go outside a veteran. Maybe they'll get a veteran guy to come in and play defensive line. Or we could talk about uh Folo Fadukazi and his ability to play the nose also in a pinch. So it's like, well, maybe that's not a problem because they still got Gosses and they still got all of these other guys. Then they they get rid of Adam Gosses and they, they also uh, got rid of Jay two Feely. So now you're left with two guys that are 300 pounders. The guys that I mentioned, Fadu Kazi, as well as Devon Hamilton, everyone else on this team is like a three technique. You're talking about 
Dewan Smoot, Roy Robinson Harris, Arden Key. None of those guys are big guys. So you look at the Jaguars and you're like, well, wait a minute. They got like five or maybe six guys that can play with their hand on the ground. What are they going to do? It led to a lot of speculation from a lot of people that they're going to run a 4-3. They're going to run a 4-3 and they're going to alternate Fadu Kazi and Devon Hamilton. And you'll say, well, no, they're going to run a 3-4, but they basically run a 4-3 in the nickel. They were, In the nickel, they run a four-man front. So it's like a 4-2-5. So they're in nickel. Most of the teams around the league are in nickel somewhere between 65 and 70% of the time. The thing about that is you have to get to nickel first. You have to win first down and create a long down and distance situation on second down. If it's second or third and anything under six yards, you might not get put in nickel. You might not. The the challenge here is to make sure that the Jaguars running game on defense doesn't get exposed. And they are in the correct division for that to happen. That it would be exposed. Because this this division is is all about guys running the football. What made them do this? And 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 the prospects that I bring up is maybe they have their eye on a certain veteran. And I'll explain why, if that's the case, why they would cut guys this week instead of waiting until next week. That's one scenario. The other scenario is. Did they see something in the preseason that made them believe that playing four down is the best thing for this team? And it's just not their responsibility to tell anybody. To play four down from the very beginning and alternate Devon Hamilton and Folo Fadakazi. Could that be it? Could you see the fact that they spent umpteen million dollars on Fadakazi? I think it was 12 to 15 per year. And he's a rotational piece. Something that Doug Peterson said when they traded, or when they got, when they cut um, Malcolm Brown was this. Big guys like that don't really get a lot, of, a lot of opportunities in today's game. And that stuck with me because it's almost justification for him to actually now go and do what he's doing and only have two of those type of players on the team at once. Just think back to when the Jaguars were a a 4-3 team. You knew who the starter was, whether it was Marcel Darius or whoever. And you knew who the backup was, but you didn't know who the third guy was because they didn't have one. So is this team, is this a team that found something in the preseason? Not necessarily that they were bad at being a standard 314 but did they find something in the preseason that says we're better at that and we're very very good at that so we're going to lean towards that side where we're going to be multiple up front but we're really going to play four three or some variation of it lots of questions to answer and i'm going to get to them all and i'm going to do that here in just a second on Locked On Jaguars, after I tell you guys about betonline.net, who's our sponsor for today's show. Rafael Nadal, if you would have followed the trends, you would have known that he's beat that kid he beat last night eight out of nine times, and he could have won you some Skrilla. This is the type of information that you need, and the only place you can get it is at betonline.net because it's your number one source for all your pro and football and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Did you have Central Michigan laying that many points on Oklahoma State? I bet everyone took the under on that and they lost. You would have won because potentially if you'd gone to bet online, you would have known what you were supposed to do because it's your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And it's also the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events including boxing, baseball, golf, and MMA. 
Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action because Bet Online is where the game starts. And you start here with T Wig every single day, Monday through Friday, because it's your team every day. We thank you for making us your first listen here on Locked on Jaguars. I mentioned in the break that before before I went and, and talked about Bet Online, I mentioned that Doug Peterson made this comment about the fact that some of the bigger guys, I think he was in particular talking about Malcolm Brown, that they were let go because in today's game, there's not a lot of snaps for guys like that. And what I took that as is run stuffer, not a, not a dude who gets after it in terms of, not a dude that gets after it in terms of going after the passer. And then I started to take a look. They added more Mike linebackers, and they also got, uh, you know, they they kept, uh, I think, three or four, yeah, four outside rush types. So normally when you think about how many defensive linemen a team keeps, in particular a 4-3 team, it's nine or ten. So when you add the guys that are on the team that are down linemen, and then you add those outside backers, the Sam and the Will, it's about nine people in your front seven, so it's the same number. That part doesn't alarm me. But normally when a team is, is primarily a 3-4 team, they keep more size and they allow their linebackers to make the plays. It's almost as if what they're doing here is they're going to build the front seven the same as they would if they were running a 4-3 because they're going to spend more time in a 4-3 than they are 3-4. But it's just odd because normally if you're a standard 3-4 team, you have more big people that you put on the field at one time. So it's really confusing to me that if that's what you were going to do, and if you knew that off, you know, out the gate, that what you would have done was you would have had it would have reflected your roster and camp would have reflected that. That's why I think what they've done here is they either figured something out that they were better at doing it the other way than they are with the standard three four front, or they're gonna they're working on an agreement to sign in Damakon Sue here this week coming up. So you say, well, if that was if that's what they're going to do, with why would they let these guys go early instead of just keeping them, just in case a deal doesn't go through? Because here's what you do to vested guys and veterans, guys like Adam Gostas: you give them all weekend to to have a chance to catch on somewhere else. Why would you do that? Because it's a courtesy, and agents remember everything. It's a courtesy because if a vested guy is on the roster, come this Wednesday which is four days before open open and get open a day, their contract is guaranteed all year. I think anyone that's picked up after that or on a week to week basis, everything gets prorated. I, I believe that's the case. I know the first half of it is true. So what you do with a, a vested professional like that is you allow those guys to get out on, you know, a week, a week out of that Wednesday and you allow them to maybe land on their feet after sitting out 24 hours and everybody catching the breath that they're available. So a guy like Adam Gosses, who's a pro's pro, who's going to be on somebody's roster, is on somebody's roster already in their facility when Wednesday kicks in so that his contract is guaranteed for the whole year. That's usually the way it works. And that's why you do it. What makes me think, though, that the Jaguars, I don't have any information that they're going to sign in Damakong Sue. I don't. And if they don't, they don't. But what makes me or gives me the idea that they decided we're better off this other way is just out of nowhere they signed these extra linebackers and they got rid of some of their bigger people. So their team now is more configured up front of a team that runs a 4-3. Even if they don't line up that way, I think they believe that they're going to be in that they're going to be in that in that front and in that alignment more than you think. I also believe this means that you won't see a lot of Devon Hamilton and Folo Fadakazi on the field at the same time. 
I really believe now this makes sense that they're either one or the other is going to be on the field unless it's a goal line situation or unless it starts the game or start drives on first down. And then the first guy you're going to see running out of there is one of those dudes. And maybe a linebacker comes in as opposed to a 4-2-5 DB. They could go to a straight 4-3 front. But I am alarmed a little bit, and I am weird that you go through all the training camp with all these big people, and then you get rid of all of them. And then after you make your 53 cut, your, your, your main 53 cuts, you start adding more linebackers. They're not supposed to tell us why they come to the conclusion that they have to do this, by the way. And they shouldn't. But still. It leaves something to think about and something to be desired. All right, so we're going to do one final segment here for the week before we start getting ready for the Labor Day weekend and then come back and start preparing for game week. And I'll do that for you in just a second here on Locked on Jaguar. All right, what does it all mean? What does it all mean for the Jacksonville Jaguars? It means they better be right because if they're not, all of these things are going to come back and – they're going to have people second-guessing them about training camp while they wasted their time. Were they not able to find the right uh, people and parts to play? All the, did they do this because they didn't have enough depth at big defensive linemen or big big defensive end? Why all of a sudden uh, the change? Or did they just fool us all from the, from the very beginning? But this is a strategy that people will second-guess and some people will go like, hey, man, what are y'all doing? What, what you know, What's going on here? And I'll continue to check and scour my emails to see if I received anything from Jaguars PR that suggests that that's exactly what's happening. But no, there are no new additions. There's nothing going on. And uh, it just it just really, really caught me by shock and surprise. You know, I did that when I did my final 53. I had him with another big man on the defensive line. It appears that a premium has been placed on speed up front. And they believe that they can sacrifice a little bit of size in order to keep guys who can really, really run and fly to the ball. It's risky. I'm also wondering, does this mean that one of those big guys won't start the game? Will they start one of the big guys, one of the either uh, Hamilton or Fadu Kazi, and then Roy Robinson Harris next to him at three technique. Put one of your, your 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 big guys down with his hand on the ground, and then have another guy standing up, or have another guy with his hand on the ground in sort of a nine wide technique. I'm very interested to see what it looks like. I'm also thinking about it from this perspective. Maybe they're doing this the one game at a time thing. Maybe they're doing this just for Washington and to prepare for Washington because Washington loves to throw the ball to the running backs. Maybe this is what they're doing. And then maybe by week two, they go make some additions and go out on the waiver wire and pick people up. Or maybe you see them bring somebody back and then they go back to what they were supposed to be or what we all thought that they were going to do in the first place. If this does not work, this will be the first thing people talk about. If the Jaguars have a, a problem stopping the run. This will absolutely be one of the first initial things that the Jaguars fans will bring up that everyone will talk about is why did they go through training camp the whole time doing one thing and then all of a sudden, it seems like right right at cut time, realized that they didn't have enough and then they switched out and went the other way. Does this mean you'll see Trayvon Walker doing something you didn't see him doing a lot of in training camp. And that is, well, you saw him do, you saw him with his hand on the ground, but for the most part, him and Josh Allen were both standing up. Are they taking the chance that they're going to be able to stay healthy? Will they configure the practice squad uh, to reflect the fact that they know they're taking a risk with guys uh, doing certain things? Or have they just been hap that much happy with guys like Dewan Smoot? who they believe can play the big end spot. I don't know, man. It's a little bit risky for me, but Mike Caldwell and those guys are a lot smarter than I am. It just seems like something's really, really strange 
and weird about the way that this final 53 is being configured. And it's just something for you to keep your eye on because quite frankly, it caught me by surprise a little bit. I have to be deadly honest with you. It caught me by surprise when I was thinking about when you listen to what they talk about, how they talk about it, what they want to do. I'm not saying that they've lied to anybody. They haven't done that. But either they are super stealth at being able to hold back what they're really going to do or everything we watched in training camp, really, they, they're kind of scrapping it a little bit. Or like I said, they could very well be. I did see one clip that someone put on uh, online that when the Jaguars go to this certain lineup where they have like Arden Key, Trayvon Walker, Josh Allen, all on the field at the same time, and I think the other guy was either Smoot or Roy Robinson Harris, that they were pretty much unblockable from that position. But those are on passing downs. And if they think if they think that because that lineup was so good on passing downs that that's what they're going to be able to do, I just say you have to make sure you can get to that point first by stopping the run. Because if they line up this way, I promise you, any team that looks at their roster and says, okay, how can we beat them? I think they're going to – I think everybody's going to come out and try to run the ball. The Jags must also believe they're going to score a lot of points. Because if they believe they're going to be high octane and score a lot of points, that means that if they strike first, they're going to put pressure on the team to not have the patience in the running game to try to keep up with them. So there's a lot to think about and a lot to look forward to and address. We're going to do all of that as we start moving forward to the rest of the NFL season. I got to let you all know also about the ultimate football preview. It is out now. People are sharing clips of me going ape on uh, the guys from around the AFC South. Make that your second listen because it's an eight-episode extravaganza to get you ready for the NFL season. All the local team experts on Locked On Podcast Network, plus a betting angle from Lee Sterling of Locked On Bets, all combining into one ultimate NFL preview. Search for Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022 on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. All right, man, I'm checking one more time. No, no email from Jack's PR saying that they've added anyone. So the next time I talk to you will be after Labor Day, and we'll discuss if the Jaguars have made any moves because they'll be one day away from having to have their 53-man for the week settled up. Until then, you guys take care of each other. Have a very, very good holiday with your loved ones. Be safe, and we'll see you next time.